Well, thank you so much uh, uh, for uh, the opportunity uh, to uh, speak. Of course, uh, I would like to thank uh, Ambassador Prasad, a uh, very dear friend of uh, Afghanistan, and as well as uh, Dr. Uh, Vishal uh, Chandra, also a good friend of Afghanistan, a leading expert in South Asia on Afghanistan. Um, so I'll try to keep my uh, re uh, remarks as uh, um, short as possible so we have uh, um, enough time for uh, Q&A. Um, first I will uh, discuss Afghanistan as a landlocked uh, but uh, roundabout in heart of Asia and I'll be very brief about that. And in the situation in Afghanistan, the cast of regional and extra-regional um, uh, stakeholders with a dichotomous focus of cooperation and confrontation in Afghanistan and implications, of course, for our connectivity uh, internal to Afghanistan but also external to the region. Um, then connectivity achievements in Afghanistan internally but also externally. Um, challenges to connectivity, um, I will discuss that, and then opportunities for uh, increased uh, uh, connectivity, including uh, projects such as TAPI, I wouldn't uh, focus much on that, but I'll just mention it, and then mechanisms of cooperation, there's so many of uh, such mechanisms uh, to, uh, to uh, help uh, connect uh, Afghanistan internally and with the rest of the region, and then the way forward. First, um, the uh, fact that we are landlocked we are landlocked, and as our president has often said, and the former president used to say, that we are the land bridge between uh, South and North, between uh, Central Asia and Southwest and uh, South Asia, um, uh, or the roundabout, uh, of course, of uh, Asia and this uh, very rich uh, region, both in terms of natural resources and human resources. Uh, which uh, has been discussed over the past uh, uh, two days. Uh, and that's why Afghanistan is really promoting and supporting full spectrum connectivity from land to air, maritime, cyber, of course, others uh, which were discussed like sociocultural, political, economic. Uh, the uh, cast of regional and extra-regional um, stakeholders concerned uh, with Afghanistan and involved in Afghanistan include, of course, India, China, Russia, Pakistan, and Iran, and as well as extra-regional players such as the United States and the European uh, Union. It's, this is very important to keep uh, in mind as I discuss uh, uh, connectivity uh, in Afghanistan. So if uh, we think about that uh, cooperation uh, and then connectivity, uh, we can discuss the achievements of Afghanistan over the past uh, now 15 uh, years since the fall of the Taliban. If you recall where Afghanistan was under the Taliban, we were one of the most isolated countries and what is already at least uh, connected uh, region, uh, South Asia and Central uh, Asia. But we've come a long way over the past uh, 15 years in terms of uh, uh, not only um, hard connectivity, which includes the completion of the Afghan National uh, Railway, part of which was built with the financial support of India, the Zaranj and Dalaram connecting Afghanistan with Iran, which now is, of course, a route to Charbahar port. But, as all, but, uh, but also on the uh, south side, in terms of political security, defense, social, economic, and cultural inside Afghanistan, thinking about uh, state building uh, process and how that has uh, benefited Afghanistan uh, uh, the Afghan people across uh, the, the country with uh, the international support, including regional support, particularly from India with their now uh, $3 billion, $2 billion of which has been spent with $1 billion uh, recently pledged to help continue uh, consolidating the gains Afghanistan have made both in the um, uh, hard and as well as, uh, as, well as soft uh, sides, including connectivity. The challenges to connectivity in Afghanistan, as the concept note uh, alludes to, and which has been uh, discussed uh, thoroughly 
uh, throughout uh, the, this conference so far uh, include inter-estate uh, tensions and hostilities uh, that actually get in the way of connectivity. And, uh, and that is, of course, uh, direct implications uh, in Afghanistan, that's use of imposed conflicts and ongoing uh, violence. If you look at how much Afghanistan, despite our meager resources and our almost complete reliance on foreign aid, spends on defense and security, uh, which is uh, between uh, four to six billion dollars. And think about if we were able to spend this on our developmental uh, programs at the heart of which is connectivity of one song would have over the past 15 years gotten a long uh, way ahead in terms of internal connectivity but also uh, regional and global uh, connectivity. Unfortunately, um, over the past two years since uh, the withdrawal of NATO forces in Afghanistan. Now, they have, of course, a small, much smaller footprint of about 12,000 forces. General Nicholson has now uh, requested another 5,000 forces to help uh, Afghanistan stabilize. Until that happens, unfortunately, we have taken much of the security responsibility from uh, NATO with meager resources in terms of the enablers, including uh, the kind of quality training and as well as equipment, close air support and so forth that we need to help stabilize Afghanistan so that development and long development uh, connectivity uh, happens in Afghanistan. Um, that, uh, uh, like I said, over the past uh, two years, violence has increased. Unfortunately, that means more uh, defense security is spending away from uh, uh, development. Um, and therefore, uh, also, um, and the fact that uh, that that uh, the interstate tensions are there, we have not been able to implement a number of uh, regional and sub-regional uh, trade and transit uh, agreements, such as the APTA of Afghanistan Pakistan Trade and Transit Agreement. As you recently may recall, Pakistan unfortunately closed the border as they. Uh, uh, hosted the ECHO, the Economic uh, 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 Cooperation Organization Summit in Islamabad, uh, where our, our ambassador uh, participated in and discussed the importance of uh, prosperity uh, or security through economic cooperation. And 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 as a recommendation was for the region to put economic cooperation ahead of. Um, uh, geopolitical rivalries uh, uh, that has uh, victimized Afghanistan for uh, so long, um, and, um, and and the fact that uh, Pakistan should have, as a uh, goodwill gesture, opened uh, the border before uh, holding the summit, which uh, it didn't until, of course, the recent trilateral uh, meeting between Afghanistan, UK, and Pakistan and London, which uh, recently led to the opening of uh, the border, which actually uh, cost both sides and probably Pakistan more because in Pakistan's the vegetables uh, season and as well as uh, the kinds of fruits that they uh, export to Afghanistan, but it also hurt our traders. And then, of course, PATA, which is the Pakistan Afghanistan Tajikistan Agreement, uh, which uh, Afghanistan has. Um, uh, suggested and recommended strongly that India should be included as it unless uh, these uh, agreements and other agreements in place are fully operationalized it's hard for uh, South Asia uh, and for Afghanistan to be uh, properly uh, connected. Um, on the opportunities for uh, increased uh, connectivity as it has been um, discussed uh, Afghanistan just became a member of the uh, uh, Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank and of course we welcome the One Belt One Road uh, initiative uh, whose uh, diplomatic arm must focus on prevention of violence or its escalation in countries uh, uh, like Afghanistan through which or around which uh, over is uh, uh, to be uh, built. And we also welcome the UN Security Council resolution um, supporting uh, over and we look forward to benefiting from the Silk Road uh, Fund which uh, China set up, uh, so I think about $40 billion or so, in order to, to help uh, build infrastructure in Afghanistan. 
Of course, uh, another opportunity before us that has been discussed, and I don't discuss as much as SOC, and I think it's uh, various uh, regional and sub-regional uh, connectivity initiatives, uh, which uh, if uh, we uh, uh, were to overcome the uh, geopolitical political uh, uh, issues, then we should be able to operationalize uh, SARC and SAFTA and uh, related initiatives underneath that. Uh, RECA, which is Regional Economic Cooperation um, uh, Conference on Afghanistan, was initiated in 2005. And under RECA, uh, which, whose seventh uh, meeting or conference is going to be held in Turkmenistan um, in uh, November, uh, we have a, a number of uh, priorities. Of course, some 20 uh, projects, uh, which was in the RECA annual review 2016, was uh, recently uh, discussed. And those projects include energy, transport networks, trade and transit facilitation, communications, uh, business to business and labor support, um, and, and other uh, related issues. Um, the priorities are listed under uh, RECA uh, 7 um, on uh, our Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs website related to uh, this is, of course, to further uh, promote uh, the full implementation of uh, TAPI, of course, continued implementation of CASA 1000, a continued implementation um, of uh, the Charbahar uh, Trade and Transit Agreement uh, among Afghanistan, India, and uh, Iran, um, as well as uh, continued implementation of Afghanistan, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan Railway, and uh, also the Lapis Lazuli uh, Trade, one of the key um, initiatives of our president, Lapis Lazuli Economic Corridor or Trade uh, Transit Transport Agreement involving Afghanistan, Turkmenistan, uh, Azerbaijan, Georgia, and uh, Turkey. And I, I can confirm this, but this is uh, supposed to be signed and uh, Kabul soon. Another mechanism um, of cooperation, of course, has been the heart of Asia, Istanbul process, with it is various confidence building measures, including uh, the two relevant, um, uh, one of which is led by India, the one on trade, commerce, and investment, and as well as infrastructure, whose lead nation is uh, Turkmenistan. And beneath this, um, there's another CBN on counterterrorism involving the countries, including Afghanistan, Pakistan, and others, to um, cooperate. And then, of course, ECHO, which I pointed out, is, is there. And um, uh, the Shanghai Cooperation uh, Organization, SEO, will include uh, India and Pakistan as full member states in the upcoming June summit. And uh, Iran is also requested to be, uh, uh, to be a full member, and Afghanistan has been interested. Right now, we are an observer. Uh, so uh, we strongly feel that uh, the two key uh, issues, or three key issues on the agenda of SEO uh, include uh, connectivity, uh, counterterrorism, and counter-narcotics. These are the three uh, top areas of our concern and interest in Afghanistan. We think that with the inclusion of India and Pakistan, SEO can operationalize its, uh, and should operationalize its uh, agenda and the uh, areas uh, which I pointed out and should play uh, a, a, a role, especially since it is about Asia. It's about uh, you know, the rise of Asia at the heart of which is Afghanistan. And I think all the key countries of Asia, Russia, China, India, and of course uh, Pakistan and Iran, the two other countries uh, of concern and interest to Afghanistan as our uh, immediate neighbors uh, are going to be included and Afghanistan will also come on board. So we have a p perfect platform uh, for uh, cooperation in uh, this region and throughout Asia, so long as, of course, the uh, well is there to act uh, and to uh, take advantage of the many mechanisms of regional cooperation, which I pointed out, and as well as to build on the many projects that are underway, but uh, as it was pointed out, continue to face uh, bottlenecks uh, because of uh, geopolitical uh, reasons. So. The way forward, uh, really, in Afghanistan, based on what I said, confrontation and cooperation, 
I think it is uh, completely now up to the countries which I pointed out whether to confront each other in Afghanistan or around Afghanistan, other countries in the region, or to cooperate. And it has been said over the past two days that in their best long-term interest of every country in the region, and that's what I told these uh, countries, uh, six countries that participated in the recent Feb, uh, 15th uh, uh, meeting in Moscow on peace in Afghanistan, where I led our delegation, and I talked to each one of the uh, heads of the delegation and exactly told them these words that it is up to you around this table to take advantage of the opportunities uh, to cooperate uh, in Afghanistan as opposed to uh, confront. And I think continentally speaking, uh, of course, the rise of Asia very much depends on cooperation as opposed to confrontation. And Afghanistan is right at the center uh, very center of the heart of Asia countries, uh, which are about 14 uh, countries and participate in the heart of Asia Istanbul process to help stabilize Afghanistan. Um, we uh, continue welcoming India's very constructive win-win focus in Afghanistan, uh, which is certainly not uh, Pakistan-centric, and we invite Pakistan as well to emulate uh, uh, India. We encourage both countries to uh, take concrete uh, steps, at least those initial concrete uh, steps, towards a comprehensive normalization of their relationship to foremost benefit themselves and their economies. Uh, because we heard this morning and yesterday how much the two countries have been losing economically and financially at a time when other continents, other regions of colleagues have uh, united, have allied. Learning, of course, from the better experience of Europe because they were also very much like this region focused on zero sums. And they realized that you know, after two world wars and millions of people killed and you know, so much destruction that cost them billions probably in today's terms, that they came to the realization uh, that they needed to you know, uh, create a, a common custom, which then, of course, um, uh, evolved into the European uh, community and then to the uh, European Union. And just recently, they uh, celebrated 60 years of that union under uh, since the uh, adoption of the uh, Rome Treaty. So the examples are there. Uh, we individually, the countries in the region, know how much we're losing. Uh, details were discussed over the past two days. And I hope that uh, South Asia uh, will, especially based on the recommendations uh, provided by this conference, will, uh, will uh, come along um, and actually deliver on, uh, on the uh, consensus that often emerges in uh, the summits among uh, leaders. And Afghanistan is a participant and a full uh, member of many of the regional uh, mechanisms in this region. And each time we participate in these uh, conferences and meetings, there's often consensus, there's often understanding. So it's just a matter of the will uh, to be uh, committed. And then, of course, issues of uh, reforms needed, as it was pointed out, and as well as raising the resources, either from our own region or multilateral banks that was pointed out, we can uh, go about that. With that, thank you so much, and I look forward to your questions.